In this PowerPoint, we'll continue looking at reaction stoichiometry, but this time we'll discuss how to deal with amounts of liquids, either pure or in solution, that are usually measured in units of volume. In previous PowerPoints, we learned to do either mass-to-mass -mass or mole-to-mole -mole stoichiometry using the coefficients in the balanced chemical equation as a stoichiometric factor. And this is the heart of all stoichiometry calculations. It's the conversion from moles of one substance in the reaction to moles of another substance. If we start with units other than moles, we simply have to convert into moles using the appropriate conversion factor. And if we need units other than moles, we also have to use a conversion factor to convert out of moles. So for example, if we start with units of grams for our substances, then we can convert into moles using the molar mass, in this case of substance A. We can also convert out of moles of B into grams of B using the molar mass of substance B. But we also measure in the laboratory in units of volume. In particular for liquids, whether they're pure substances or solutions, it's easier to measure out in a graduated cylinder rather than on a balance. And how do we do stoichiometry with these types of substances when we start with units of milliliters rather than grams? How do we convert from milliliters ultimately to moles? Well, it depends on what the liquid is. If we're dealing with a pure reactant that's simply in the liquid phase, which means in the chemical equation the formula will be followed by an L in parentheses, then we can find a characteristic density for that pure substance. And we can use the density to convert between milliliters, a volume measurement, and mass for that substance. And of course, once we have mass, we can then convert into moles and the heart of our stoichiometry calculation using molar mass. We can also convert out of moles for substance B using the molar mass of substance B. And if we need to, we can further convert into the volume of substance B if it's a pure substance using the characteristic density for substance B. For solutions, these are substances that are usually characterized with an AQ in parentheses following the formula in the chemical equation. These substances have concentrations, which allow us to convert more directly between measurements of volume and moles. The most common concentration unit that we're going to deal with is molarity, which is moles per liter of solution. So if we have a measurement of liters of our solution A, then we can use the molarity to convert directly into moles of substance A. And then, of course, we use the ratio of coefficients, our stoichiometric factor, to convert into the substance that we want in the end, moles of B. And then we can take it wherever we need it. If B is also in solution, we can use the molarity of solution B to determine the volume of solution B. Let's look at a few examples of these types of problems. We'll start with a pure liquid example. Aspirin can be made in the laboratory by reacting liquid acetic anhydride with solid salicylic acid. The products of the synthesis reaction include aspirin, of course, as well as acetic acid. In a laboratory synthesis, a student begins with 5.00 milliliters of liquid acetic anhydride and 2.08 grams of solid salicylic acid. How many grams of aspirin should be formed? Notice that I'm given two amounts as starting points in this problem. And both of these substances are reactants, acetic anhydride and salicylic acid. This indicates that I have a lim limiting reactant situation, and I'll have to do two stoichiometry calculations, one from each of my reactant starting points. 
We'll start with the acetic anhydride. So we're starting with units of milliliters, which means that we're going to have to convert from milliliters into grams using the density of our substance. So we know that the formula for density is mass divided by volume. If I want to get mass, then I need to multiply both sides by volume, and I get mass equals density times volume. So if I'm starting with my volume unit here, I can simply multiply it by the density. My units of milliliters will cancel out, and I'll be left with grams of acetic anhydride. And once I have grams, I can convert that into moles, which is going to be the start of my, the heart of my stoichiometry calculation, by dividing by the molar mass of acetic anhydride. So 102.10 grams is simply the mass I get by adding together four carbon, six hydrogen, and three oxygen. My grams cancel out, and I'll be left with moles of acetic anhydride. I can then convert this into moles of the product that I want, which is aspirin. So everything is a one-to-one -one ratio in this balanced chemical equation. So I have a one-to-one -one ratio for converting from acetic anhydride, which cancels out, to moles of aspirin, C9H8O4. And finally, I need to get this into grams, so I multiply by the molar mass of aspirin. 180.17 is the sum of 9 carbon, 8 hydrogen, and 4 oxygen masses. My moles cancel out, and my final answer for this is 9.53 grams of aspirin. So this is the amount of aspirin that could be formed if all of the acetic anhydride reacts away. Let's see what would happen if all of the salicylic acid reacted away. So this time I'm starting with units of grams, so I can simply use the molar mass of salicylic acid directly to convert into moles. So I divide by molar mass, 138.13 grams, and I multiply by one mole, which is the other side of my molar mass, and that gets me to moles of salicylic acid. I can convert into moles of aspirin using the coefficients from the balanced chemical equation. It's a one-to-one -one ratio. My moles of salicylic acid cancel out, and then I can convert from moles of aspirin to grams of aspirin using the molar mass of aspirin. In this case, I multiply by that molar mass, 180.17 grams. My final answer is 2.71 grams of aspirin. So remember that for limiting reactant problems, the answer or the amount of your product that can be formed is always going to be the smaller of the two amounts. So in this case, 2.71 grams of aspirin could be formed from this combination of acetic anhydride and salicylic acid. The salicylic acid is my limiting reactant, and the acetic anhydride is my excess reactant. Now let's look at an example with solutions. How many milliliters of a 0.3300 molar sodium hydroxide solution would be required to neutralize 15 milliliters of a 0.2500 molar hydrochloric acid solution? I have three different numbers that I'm given in this particular problem, so I need to be careful to actually pair up volume and molarity with the appropriate substance. And it turns out that I'm given a complete set of information for hydrochloric acid, and a complete set of information for solutions includes volume and its conversion factor into moles, molarity. So this is substance A. I have a volume starting point and the conversion factor to get it into moles. I'm asked for the volume of sodium hydroxide. That makes it substance B, what I'm converting into. And I have to be given the conversion factor, 
or the concentration of that substance be in order to get to my final volume. So the heart of my calculation is still going to be moles of substance A to moles of substance B, in this case hydrochloric acid to sodium hydroxide, using the coefficient ratio from the balanced chemical equation. In order to convert from volume into moles, I need to use the molarity calculation, and I can get moles by itself by multiplying both sides of this equation by liters. And that will give me liters times molarity equals moles. So I take my volume, 15.00 milliliters, and I convert it into liters. You can either multiply it by 10 to the negative third liters over milliliter, and the milliliter will cancel out, or you can move your decimal three places to the left. Now I can multiply my liters by my molarity, and I'm going to set this up as a conversion factor so that you can see how the units actually cancel out. 0.2500 molar hydrochloric acid solution is the same as saying I have 0.2500 moles of hydrochloric acid per one liter of solution. When I set it up this way, I can see how my liters will actually cancel out, and I'll be left with moles of hydrochloric acid. Then I can use the coefficients from the balanced chemical equation to to cancel out moles of hydrochloric acid and get moles of sodium hydroxide. And my last step will be to calculate the volume of sodium hydroxide that's necessary. So to convert from moles to a unit of volume, I'm going to need that molarity calculation again. And this time I want liters by itself, our unit of volume, so I'm going to divide both sides by molarity. It'll cancel out on the left-hand side, and I'll be left with moles divided by the molarity equals liters. So I'm also going to set this up as a conversion factor so you can see how the units cancel out. Dividing my, by molarity is the same as using a conversion factor that's flipped one liter of sodium hydroxide solution over my molarity number 0 0.3300 moles of sodium hydroxide. The moles will cancel out and I'll be left with liters of sodium hydroxide solution. I can convert this into milliliters by dividing this time by 10 to the negative third liters. My liters will cancel out and I'll be left with milliliters. In this case, 11.36 milliliters of sodium hydroxide. Let's look at another example. A 20.0 milliliter sample of acid rain is neutralized with 1.7 milliliters of 0 0.0811 molar sodium hydroxide. If we assume the acidity of the rain is due to the presence of sulfuric acid, H2SO4, what was the molarity of sulfuric acid in the rainwater? So here's the balanced chemical equation for this neutralization reaction. It's a two to one ratio between sodium hydroxide and sulfuric acid. Again, I'm given three numbers in the problem. I have to be careful to actually pair up the correct volume and molarity. And I'm given a full set of information for sodium hydroxide, a volume starting point, as well as the molarity conversion factor. The rainwater, I'm only given volume. In order to use this as a starting point, I would have to be given the molarity for, as well, but I'm not. So rainwater, or in this case, it's the sulfuric acid in the rainwater, that's going to be my substance B, while sodium hydroxide is my substance A, my starting point. The heart of my calculation is still going to be moles of sodium hydroxide to moles of sulfuric acid using the 2 to 1 coefficient ratio. Again, though, I need to convert from my starting volume of sodium hydroxide into moles using my molarity calculation. So again, we multiply liters by both sides and we get liters times molarity equals moles. 
So we start with 1.7 milliliters of sodium hydroxide. We convert that into liters by multiplying by 10 to the negative third liters divided by one milliliter. The milliliters will cancel out. Or you could just move the decimal three places to the left and then multiply liters by my molarity. And of course, I'm writing the molarity as a conversion factor where liters is on the bottom, one liter, and 0 0.0811 moles of sodium hydroxide is on top. So next, I need to convert into moles of sulfuric acid using my coefficient ratio. I'll set it up so that moles of sodium hydroxide is on the bottom so that it cancels with the moles in my molarity. I'll be left with moles of sulfuric acid. And I have 6.894 times 10 to the negative 5 moles of sulfuric acid. Now I need to actually convert this into molarity. But this I can do using my molarity formula straight. Moles of sulfuric acid divided by the liters of rainwater will give me the molarity of sulfuric acid in that rainwater. In this case, that's 6.894 times 10 to the negative 5 moles divided by 20 milliliters converted into liters. So that's multiplied by 10 to the negative third, or with the decimal place, move three places to the left. That gives me 0.0034 moles per liter of sulfuric acid in the rainwater. In summary, for reactions that involve pure substances in the liquid phase, which means that they'll be followed by an L in parentheses in the chemical equation, you can convert measurements of liquid volume to mass using the density for the pure substance. Once you have mass, you can convert to moles using molar mass. And then you can use coefficients from the balanced chemical equation to convert to moles of the substance you're trying to find. And from moles of what you're trying to find, you can convert to whatever unit you need in the end. For reactions that involve aqueous solutions, those are substances that have an AQ in parentheses following them. You can use the molarity formula to convert between volume of solution and moles of what you're given. And once you have moles of reactant, you can do a mole-to-mole -mole stoichiometry problem using the coefficients from the balanced chemical equation for the substances involved. And for moles of what you're trying to find, you can convert to whatever unit you need.